Hey everyone, it's Fox from Modelmaking.guru here, back with another build for emodels.co.uk. Uh, this time we're going to be building this puppy. Okay, right, so a bit of a departure for me from sci-fi. Uh, if you know me, this, you'll know there's two things I love, video games and sci-fi. I used to make a lot of military miniature kits when I was a kid, uh, when I was learning the craft. Uh, lots of Tamiya 135th kits. So this is a nice return to that for me. Um, there is a kind of geeky link though. Um, as I say, I like video games and I've been watching with interest the trailers and, tra trailers and teasers for Metal Gear Solid V. So just recently I played through Metal Gear Solid 4, because I've never played a Metal Gear game before. Absolutely thought it was, loved it, thought it was brilliant, had a great time. And when it came time to choose another model, um, rather serendipitously, I happened upon the Striker. Uh, one of the characters in Metal Gear Solid 4, Drebin 893, he's an arms dealer. But he's also a good guy, and he drives around in his own custom Striker. Um, so I decided, well, why don't I get a Striker? and make Drebin's vehicle. Uh, the closest one I could find is the Fire Support Striker. This was the Trumpeter 135th scale kit. Uh, they do a few different variations, um, but this is the one I went for. There's a few bits on here that aren't relevant to Drebin's vehicle, so that I won't be using, but it's as close as I can get. So what I'm going to actually do with this kit is build it as close as I can to the few shots there are, uh, pictures there are available of Drebin's Striker. Um, do his custom paint job uh, and then I've actually found someone who can make decals for me uh, white decals so I'm going to be getting decals made specifically to match his vehicle so I'm not going to be using well, pretty much most of the decals in this kit I'm not going to use uh, I'm also not going to be using the figures or uh, a lot of the, the sort of luggage and stowage but uh, let's get this box open anyway before we go I'll just show you some, show you some quick I'll put my teeth in today blah 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 talking nonsense Blah, 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 blah. Words, pies. Um, right, let me show you some quick pictures of Drebin's vehicle. Now these are screenshots from the game, um, and they're kind of hard to find. There's no real clean shot, so they're a bit higgledy piggledy. But you'll get the idea of what I'm trying to build. So let me just show you those pictures now. When we come back, we'll unbox. Okay, so now you know what I'm kind of aiming for. Let's get this puppy open. It's only going to be a short video today because this is just to open the box and show you what's inside. Uh, we'll actually start the build in the next episode. Let's get this puppy open. Um, now I'll start off, obviously. We have the uh, instruction booklet, which is quite clear and crisp. Very similar to Tamiya kits. Nice clear diagrams part numbers, um, explains which bits are photo etch, which bits are clear, uh, which bits are optional. Uh, there are a couple of bits in here when I read through that were a bit confusing, but we'll cover those off as we go along. Um, but a nice comprehensive instruction book should take a while to get through. I can't remember the exact part count in there, I think it's 300 and something parts, and they're all tiny, so yes. Uh, decal placement sheet and colour scheme, I'm going to be ignoring the colour scheme because I'm doing mine Drebin's colour. My colour is going to be, I think, a mixture of Tamiya German Grey, some blue and white uh, mixed in, and then it'll be that base colour. Uh, but the colour sheet's quite nice. It gives you call-outs for most of the main colour types. You get um, call-outs for Mr. Hobby Aquarius colour, uh, Vallejo, Model Master, Tamiya, and Humbrol paints. So it kind of covers off all the main paints you're likely to be using, which is quite nice. Uh, and then we get down to the hardware. I won't pull all of this out because you've seen parts on sprues before. Um, overall, it's a nice... Now these were bagged up, I unbagged them for the ease of this bit. Uh, it's a nice, crisp, 
detailed kit. I'm going to see if I can get a close-up shot. I've been having problems with autofocus since this new iOS 8 version came out. So let's just have a look and see if you can see any of this crisp detail. It's very nicely moulded. I hope this is in focus. It's very nicely moulded, lots of very fine details, uh, which will only be added to with all the extra bits I'm sticking on. Um, it's nice, it's not too thick, it's nice thin plastic, so it's got some flex to it for anything that needs to be bodged, I doubt there will be. Uh, but overall, it looks, it looks and feels like a really nice kit. Um, there are figures with the kit, three figures, they're wonderfully detailed. I'd actually say these are more detailed than Tamiya figures. The only main difference between these and Tamiya being that um, they're all separate legs, torsos and so on. Tamiya tend to do the entire torso with legs and then the arms are stick on and the head is stick on. Uh, or sometimes they have the head moulded into the torso as well. Uh, but the detailing on these is really, really quite crisp. I'll put some photographs at the end so you can get some close-up shots because I can't, I can't count on my focus. The detail on those is, is actually really, really nice. Uh, we have standard clear parts. I'm not taking these out of the bag because I want to keep them unscratched. Uh, there's clear parts for headlights and other parts, and there's a separate sprue for uh, the driver's uh, viewport lid. Uh, lid. Just get me with my technical military terms. The viewport hatch. You can have it open or closed, and if it's open, it has uh, glass around the edge, but I'm not going to be using that. What else do we have? More plastics. Uh, you can see on these sprues, lots and lots of really tiny parts. Let me just check the focus. Oops. Lots and lots of really tiny parts. Now I'm no stranger to tiny parts after building fine molds 170 second scale Millennium Falcon which had 900 of them. Um, but it does mean that while I'm building this a lot of the time if I film me building it you're just going to see my head because I'm going to be close up to it like this to actually see what I'm doing. Because I have old man eyes as I've explained before. So um, I may have to end up doing like chunks of building and then filming me talking about it and then a chunk of building um, for some of this series so it's not going to be me building everything from scratch on the film because that would take forever and you wouldn't see anything apart from my head which would kind of suck uh, more tiny fiddly pieces beautifully molded I'm not seeing any flash on these at all that I can pick out uh, even on the real small bits of tubing and piping. I'm not seeing a lot of flash at all. I'm hoping like a Tamiya kit these just go together perfectly and minimise any filling that needs or anything like that. If it's as good as a Tamiya kit it should go together like a dream. Um, then you get a couple of extra bits. Now I've unbagged these and put them all together but this is kind of what sets it apart to, for me from a Tamiya kit. Uh, now granted I've not made a Tamiya kit for a while and the ones I have made are the ones I made when I was a kid, so things like um, the Kubelwagen or the Opel Blitz or uh, a couple of tanks, T62, um, which are probably 20 or 30 years old now. I've not made any of the more recent kits, so I could be wrong in this. But my understanding is, if, I'm, if I remember rightly, I mean, the Tamiya kits I made didn't really have things like Photo Etch. It was just the kit, there you go, bang. Uh, but with this trumpeter kit, they've kind of gone whole hog. I think, from what I've understood, they do a series of these, and this particular kit, um, it's kit number 00398, it's the M1131 Striker Fire Support Vehicle, available on emodels.co.uk. Uh, kit 00398, um, you've got kind of extra bits that I think they sold separately at one point. You have your decals, which are quite nice, I'll show you those. Oop. Now as I say, I'm not going to be using most of these, if any of them, um, any of the specific signage because I'm going to have my own made over the next few weeks. Uh, but you get your decals. It's not a heavily marked vehicle, so it won't have a lot of decals anyway. You also get um, some papercraft. You get all kinds of things in this kit. Some papercraft, or papakura as the Japanese call it. It's Pepsi and Coke boxes, and what I think are various, um, say, uh, bottled water manufacturers in the Middle East those kind of countries. Um, they're just to add character to your vehicle if you're doing it in say a, a Middle East setting like Afghanistan or Iraq or somewhere like that. Um, you may want to have say 
crates of bottled water on the vehicle under the stowage uh, straps or just in your diorama so it's nice to include those you just cut these out fold them and glue them with paper glue and you have little crates of drinks which is quite cool photo etch parts get to in a second uh, more paper craft MREs military ration boxes uh, wonderfully printed again you just cut them out cut the little gaps and fold them into shapes so you get lots of boxes for your stowage just to add extra detail more MREs you also get some masks for the clear parts around the driver's hatch if you use them I've never tried these I've never tried the trumpet kit before so I don't know if if how good these are I'm sure they're absolutely fine uh, and I'm guessing they're self-adhesive I probably won't be using them though although I've not decided yet what I'm going to do with the little viewing ports around the uh, hatch when it's closed I'm not sure I'm going to do those yet so I may have to use those uh, and one little nice touch you get a sheet here which you probably can't see but it's a whole mess of stowage straps representing sort of canvas stowage straps where you can strap them around something so it's on the side of the vehicle at the top like so you can make netting if you have a load of um, sort of boxes and knapsacks and things on top of the vehicle they have that kind of webbing that goes over the top crisscross webbing that's what it's for and last but not least you've got some photo etch which I'll show you these are wonderful a little thicker than the photo etch I'm used to but really nice uh, and the photo etch is perfect because it's designed for things with very fine patterns like meshes like these here you can see hope it's in focus um, and parts that you, you'll need to fold these into shape for things like stowage boxes and little racks there's also some alternative parts to other parts in the kit so for example this piece here I think is the uh, blast plate that goes in front of the 50 cal gun there is an equivalent plastic piece on the kit but you've got the option this will be thinner than the molded plastic piece and look a bit more in scale and realistic uh, and little pieces for the grenade launchers so we should be doing some photo etch as well um, that's about it that'll, uh, that'll cover this episode just really showing you what's in the box um, I'm looking forward to this build I'm actually really looking forward to this build it's going to be a few weeks before I get the decals so when we, if by that point I finish the build and the painting we'll have to pause for a bit while I wait for the decals to turn up there's a bit of a lead time on those um, I may also, now I don't know this for sure don't know yet but I may also do a diorama for this one um, so if I do, I'll include that as part of the build. I'll include the, how I make the diorama. I'm not 100% sure. I may, I'm, I'm thinking I might do. But I'm not sure what yet. So probably a simple one. Nothing too complex. Um, so that will do it for this time. Uh, so it's only a quick interview. Uh, quick interview? What am I doing? Applying for a job? <sighs> quick overview. Um, I'm saying erm a lot today. It's one of those days when I'm kind of not fully awake yet and it's really warm and I'm not really thinking straight so if I've been erming a lot uh, I apologize so emodels.co.uk go along very kindly provided this kit to me um, so I can build it for them um, fantastic store everything you need models paints equipment you name it if they don't have it you don't need it um, go along and check it out brand new website looks fantastic go along as well to their facebook page facebook.com forward slash emodels ltd wonderful little community join in the conversations post your pictures up uh, they'll post up about products coming out stuff they're getting into stock they post up videos from me and ted and paul uh, and other build videos uh, just join in um, it gets quite fun on there me and ted well not ted i'm not saying ted's an idiot but i'm an idiot so i can be quite silly on there sometimes so Come along, join in. You're not an idiot, Ted. Love you. Um, join in and hang out. Um, and don't forget, of course, I've got my own website, uh, modelmaking.guru. That's modelmaking.guru. Um, I put a little blog up there of my builds, got some stuff for sale, uh, and I'll put these videos up on there as well. But yeah, check it all out. We'll come back in the next video with uh, the start of the build. Uh, but until then... What? What? Uh. Uh, hang on a minute. Hey Snake, is that your new model? It looks amazing. It's got plastic, it's got brass, it's got paper. 
More complex than the models I remember from my youth. Plastic models have changed. I guess you're right. It's amazing what they do nowadays. Were you calling for a reason, Otacon? I'm kind of busy filming here. Oh, yeah. Sorry, Snake. I was calling to let you know that I've left some equipment in the field to help your build. With your old man eyes, it's hard to see small things, so I've left you the solid headset. It'll magnify tiny objects for you so you can see them better. But watch out. If it gets in the way of the camera, no one will be able to see what you're doing. Old man eyes. Otacon, you're an idiot. <sighs> Sorry about that. Until next time, adios amoebas.